it used to be that there would be like sort of one black cast member that was like there to be Richard Pryor or somebody, you know, there to like play whoever was in the news, you know, then. Uh -huh. um, you've gotten to this place where you can do like Black Jeopardy and all these things where you can do whole things that are sort of black culture as part of the show in a way that it hasn't been. Well, these are epic times for America. <laughs> We've had an African-American president and he served two terms epically, you know? Yeah. And Michael Che is, you know, the first black head writer on that show, you know what I'm saying? And Bowen is our first, you know, Asian American to get on the show. And he happens to be gay as well, so it's like a double up. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, there's, it's just a lot of changing. I think it's a fantastic thing, you know. I think they're representing, you know, a lot of different, you know, areas of our culture, basically, yeah. our society. What is the process of getting something on the show to, to start actually writing and saying, like, I want this sketch to be on the show? Um, well, you have to numb your emotion, <laughs> number one, but that's impossible, basically. Yeah. It's a highly emotional experience. Comedy is subjective as it is, you know, so nobody thinks that, you know, they're the most hilarious person in the world, but they feel like they're kind of funny, you know what I mean? Especially if you have an idea that's, like, making you super-duper laugh and y'all spend hours writing it, and yeah. you're crying, laughing throughout it, and then you start reading it, and they don't get it. You know what I mean? And they don't get it from page one, basically. And you yeah, got reading nine pages to go. The whole cast, right? You're reading in front of the cast, the writers, the producers, you know what I mean? And like other kind of affiliate departments, basically. So it's kind of a room half this size, but it's, it's pretty serious. And there's snacks, and that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a, it's a pressure cooker. And then you constantly have the fact that this is Saturday Night Live and what these people have done before you in the back of your mind too is like, who do I think I am that I can just come here and blow these people's minds with this, with this idea? But you learn to get past that and just embrace the simplistic of it all, which is what made me laugh in the first place. You know what I mean? And then you figure out a way to explain that to people. Yeah. To this day, like what's your favorite thing that didn't get on? Well, it was um, Active Jack for a long time. It was a sketch with Bruno Mars at first, and it was about like an old timey like fitness type show where he was active Jack, and it was like a whole like music song basically. So he's like, "Come on, kids, let's get fit," <laughs> and, and like you know he's telling everybody to move it, move your body, and go up, 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 and down, down, down. <laughs> and it was a long song like that. And he's like jumping rope or whatever. So then it was like the 50th anniversary of the show. And they were celebrating it with a new special. And then 50 years later, me comes out as Active Jack, out of shape and old, and didn't go up as far or down as far. <laughs> and, you know, it, it made me laugh. And it got like a standing ovation at dress rehearsal or whatever, and then it got cut. And it was like a big ass, like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? It's like, and trust me, like any panel you go to with, you know, a cast member, they're gonna tell you a story where it was like at some point it just didn't make sense. Like I felt like I had, you know, dotted all the I's and crossed the T's like almost twice. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. It still hit the floor. Lauren always says this, but it, you know, at first it goes in one ear and out the other because of the panic of it all. But he always is like, "There's another show. You know, yeah. don't worry about it. You'll get a chance. It's early." You have the job, don't panic yourself out of it, you know, just embrace it, like you're not going anywhere, blah, blah, blah. After you had done all that and you did Keenan and Kel, there was like a moment, maybe it was when you started SNL, but was it, was there a weird transition between being that guy that's known for being young and being sort of a child to, to sort of move into the more adult phase of your career? Was that a rough transition? Oh, absolutely, shall we discuss? Yes, shall please. I, um, I left Nickelodeon in 2000. So that was a great New Year's. It was like, you know, the lights were still on at 12.02, so I was like super <laughs> excited about that. Like, we passed the Y2K, and like, nobody, I was the only one. I felt like such a nerd. I'm like, you guys! <laughs> we made it! <laughs> yeah, every, everybody was just partying, like they forgot it was even like an issue. Like, Y2K was even a thing. And I was like, all right, whatever, I guess back to the party. We'd finished our last episode like probably a couple weeks before, so I had been home. Within two days, I decided like I gotta go back to LA and like get back to it. So I moved back to LA with whatever I had left. I was sending 
I taped to SNL like almost immediately, but mm -hmm. they were saying like I look too young, I look too young. I still kind of do. <laughs> um, so I was taking like you know jobs here and there, and you know as a working actor, especially when you're young and in between things, things get you know kind of spread out. So it was like a job, and then six months with no job. You know what I'm saying? And then trying to make all that shit work while being kind of famous, you know what I'm saying? So like my brakes are squeaking, I'm getting waved at at McDonald's, you know what I'm saying? But I get a free chicken sandwich, there ain't nobody really tripping. <laughs> and I just, you know, just kept being able to pay the bills. And like I figured out how to bring in roommates and shit like that so we can all live, you know, balling together with little money. <laughs> and uh, did that hustle, you know what I'm saying? Did like Love Don't Cost a Thing and then like Felicity and then Barbershop and then everything started rolling kind of after Barbershop because I got the audition for SNL once Tracy left. After right. barbershop, so I went straight from Chicago to New York to audition. My first audition was stand up. I'd never done stand up before. They asked you to do that. They're just like, please do stand up. Well, everybody was doing stand ups because there's not a lot of black people in improv houses. You know what I mean? Especially black men. So it was just like a cattle call of like all these stand ups, basically. And regardless if I had never done stand up or not, mm -hmm. I couldn't just be like. Well, I'm the one special person that wants to audition differently. You know what I'm saying? I had to get past that stand-up thing. It was only three to five minutes or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it, I didn't know how to engage. I didn't know how to say, how's everybody doing tonight? I started with, like, you know, a phone sound effect. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> went to a phone call between, Al, you know, Al Sharpton and Arnold Schwarzenegger, weirdly. <laughs> and what was it that about? was enough to, like, get me, you know, into the studio for the callback. You know what I'm saying? And right. I was really good with that because that was the cameras the studio was just me basically and they were in the shadows like kind of laughing but I couldn't see them so it was kind of like my mind didn't even allow myself to be like oh that's Tina Fey that's Maya Rudolph that's Lauren Michaels like I know those voices over there and I know they're staring at me I just did my thing or whatever you know I went up there and I you know I guess they saw you know an inkling of something that they could work with and I got the job and it changed my life you know what I'm saying so yeah. that's the story wow.